Hello, and welcome to this fireside chat together with us at Ericsson. Today we will be talking about two very important topics in the world right now. Number one, financial inclusion. Number two, climate change. Huge topics, but the question of today will be, how are these things connected? How is mobile money helping uh, in fighting the climate change, which is, of course, perceived as a very negative thing uh, impacting the world uh, right now? My name is Ville Sointo. I am the Head of Solutions and Strategy for Ericsson Mobile Financial Services, and I'm joined here today by Pavan Bakwal, who is the Head of Sales uh, for Ericsson Mobile Financial Services. So, uh, Pavan, how are you? And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm fine, Willi. Thank you for having me on this fire chat today, and uh, good to have you back in town. Uh, I'm Pavan Bakwal. I look into financial services sales uh, within Ericsson, and uh, with the advent of how digitalization is helping both financial inclusion and at the same time facilitating advanced financial services. My role within sales is to send the message of how Ericsson with its technology for good message can be a tool and a product to take towards a larger uh, ecosystem and our customer base. Hmm. So we both work quite close to, this, to these topics, but maybe it's good to take a step back uh, for the audience as well uh, and maybe recap a little bit what is actually mobile money and uh, how it impacts financial inclusion uh, uh, to start with. So the, uh, the old funny joke that everybody wants to say is that there, there are more mobile phones than toothbrushes in the world today. Take, take it for, that for what you will, but uh, what it actually means is that because we have so many mobile phones, uh, we also have the ability to reach uh, a high number of people uh, in, in completely new ways, uh, which may were potentially excluded, uh, especially from the financial system before. And the numbers speak uh, by themselves. I mean, if we look at the, uh, there are more than 20 countries in the world where mobile money uh, supersedes the usage of bank accounts, uh, for example. In Ghana, uh, for instance, 60% of adults have mobile money accounts, whereas only 39% have bank accounts or other financial inclusion uh, instruments uh, as their primary method of interacting with financial services. So it's fairly well established already that mobile money is a direct has a direct and positive impact towards uh, financial uh, inclusion. The other side of this discussion, of course, is climate change. Now, uh, we, can, we won't get into the politics or debates about climate change, but what, what we, can, we can look at is data. If we look at the amount of extreme weather phenomenon that has happened over the past 20 years, the numbers are growing. Those are facts that you cannot, cannot deny, and therefore uh, it starts to create an interesting question. We have financial inclusion ability from mobile money, and we have the reality of extreme weather uh, and disasters happening uh, in, in many of the same regions. So, and here comes the first question, Pavan, sorry for the long round in the beginning, but the, uh, uh, so how does mobile money and financial inclusion link to climate change and how to fight the climate change? Yeah. See, I mean, climate change is one of the biggest global challenges that we face today. Uh, approximately approximately 3.6 billion people are susceptible in one or the other format with the changes of climate that we see globally. Now there, we believe that financial services technology, you know, and mobile money in general is a great tool of combating this climate crisis that we see now and then across the globe, okay? Be it in the form of governments using it to distribute funds, be it in the form of people trying to make convenient recurring payments, be it in the form of people using it for anticipatory financing of times that they have to struggle and get access to quicker funds. This is how financial services and mobile money is helping to address climate uh, crisis and challenges that we face uh, globally today. If you look at some of the studies in uh, developing economies and emerging markets, we have a case in Niger where we saw that approximately 20% of the cost with respect to how cash versus financial services transactions were there, the optimization of that really is a, a proof point how mobile money can really facilitate in re reducing costs overall. If you take another uh, example is in uh, Bangladesh, where if you see when the flood came in 2020, okay, approximately 200,000 people got access to funds in a very quick span of time, which really helped them to be prepared in order to address their day-to-day -day needs. 
So that in addition to different uh, societies trying to get access to how to donate in the times of crisis is also a way to kind of look at how mobile money and technologies can support the challenge of financial or the challenges of uh, climate disasters. Here, if you look at the other example in 2022 in uh, Pakistan, there the provider Easy Pesa has used technology with respect to government funds, non-government funds to release approximately 100 million uh, PKR for people who were in need. And that was done in a time span of approximately June to November of 22. So it's absolutely fantastic and amazing to see how this technology of financial services, mobile money is helping address the challenges that we face with respect to climate in the global world that we are today. Mm. I like the picture you're painting here. Basically what you're saying is that there's very concrete ways of reaching people, so connecting the financial system on the ground uh, with, with the likes of mobile money, because again, as we talked about in the beginning, everybody has a mobile phone. If you're able to reach and connect financial services into that mobile phone, it becomes a very powerful method uh, of, uh, of making sure that the aid gets to where it, uh, where it needs to be. But shifting gears a little bit, maybe a, a little bit of a different angle to the same topic, uh, of course, one of the groups that gets impacted heavily with climate change and the and the disasters, the weather uh, weather phenomena at the moment, are uh, are farmers. So agriculture in general, of course, is highly dependent on the weather and the climate. And changes into these ecosystems will, of course, mean uh, well direct impact to these people's income uh, and even to a certain extent the, uh, the the population living in those areas as uh, food resources might become temporarily more and more scarce. But is there something that mobile money can actually do? In in the farming and the agricultural systems to actually try to maybe even out these uh, disaster scenarios? Absolutely. I mean, mobile technology in itself is a great way how farmers globally can get information with respect to what is happening with the weather forecast, give them ideas as to what to sow when and how much to sow. In that context, if you look at mobile money, you know, uh, with respect to weather uh, index based uh, insurance of crops, that is a great way where farmers can decide how to get access to insurance in challenging times. Now, that could be for the means of paying premiums for these insurances or for the means of taking payouts in times of needs. Both is something that is possible through financial services technologies and mobile money is at the heart of it. If you take an example uh, with respect to, say, Mayfair Insurance and World for, uh, World, uh, for Food Program that uh, happened somewhere in uh, 2018, uh, 2020 timeframe, approximately 8,000 farmers in Zambia got access to funds worth of 5.5 million Zambian kwachas, which were distributed in the times that were challenging and with respect to drought and what it brings in uh, the day-to-day -day challenges of a particular farmer and how agriculture is affected overall. There, we can also look at farmers trying to access micro lending with respect to how they can kind of plan the insurance, uh, how they can plan the sowing of their crops, take the different loans and plan the payouts of those in installments, how savings can be looked into at the same time, insurances can be looked into in order to park the, some funds in times of crisis and get interest on that. So whether it is lending, whether it is distribution, whether it is insurances and for the same time uh, savings, these are a lot of financial tools that farmers and agriculturists can look at both in times of good and bad in order to kind of work towards a good uh, setup using uh, financial services tools. Mm. You covered, a, again, a large array of different use cases there. Uh, the first part mostly focusing on, on how do we react, how do we respond uh, to, to climate disasters and changes, uh, sudden changes in the weather. Uh, and then the other part more, more about leaning towards the future uh, with lending and savings and insurance. But uh, let me double click on that uh, part because, again, it's always good to talk about reactive measures uh, of, of resp and, and responding to things. But let's try to drill a little bit deeper to the proactive part. I mean, what can we do with uh, mobile money in context of financial inclusion to maybe 
preempt some of these things that are that, that are happening uh, in the in the climate. Uh, is there a connection there? Absolutely. I started my conversation by saying digitization of uh, finances, how we transact day to day, is a very important aspect. You know of what I deal with in my day to day life. Over there, if you if you look at uh, just the concepts of uh, energy and energy sources. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, a lot of energy sources and the uh, pollution that comes along is uh, due to use of source, uh, sources such as coal, such as kerosene. Now, with concepts like pay as you go solar and pay as you go gas, which is a reality in many of the markets that I have engaged with customers in, that has really helped in reducing the green gases that emissions that we see happening uh, across the globe, and this is not only helping reduce the upfront cost with respect to how all of these energy sources are working, but through the means of pay as you grow uh, and installment based payments, you know, it is really facilitating and lowering the, the pressure on uh, the, the pockets of different people involved over there. Further, if you look at some statistics in the last decade, approximately in sub-Saharan Africa, 8 million people have benefited from the pay as you grow solar and pay as you go gases concepts that have been implemented and mobile money and financial technologies are at the root of how access to such uh, uh, clean sources have been uh, leveraged upon. At the same time, if we now focus the, the aspect on more mature markets and developed markets, whether it be recycling from the concept of uh, pet bottles at stores and getting uh, money directly into your wallet mm -hmm. or your bank account, or for that matter, uh, looking into concepts like a clean seas, green oceans or clean oceans concepts where technology is used in order to kind of further credit back through crowdfunding in order to kind of facilitate uh, a, cleaner, a cleaner and greener society. I believe that it's absolutely at the core of how technology is used to address all of these uh, challenges in order to lead us into a greener uh, future. So if uh, money makes the world go around, then mobile money makes it, uh, the world greener, I guess. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Spot on. Good. Uh, now, and this is my favorite question. I also work with Ericsson, so uh, I get this question a lot in different co uh, conferences where I go to. Um, uh, what is Ericsson doing in this space? Did it, don't you guys make mobile phones or...? Absolutely. I mean, that, that's the core of the business, indeed. Uh, and we have bases across the world with that's telecommunications. Mobile networks, mobile networks yes. Absolutely, yeah. mobile networks. Yeah. Uh, that's the core of the business. But uh, what is relatively unknown is over a decade on, uh, we are one of the leaders when it comes to digital wallet technologies out there. Okay, Our current customers today, which is over 20 globally, is really using our financial services product called the Ericsson Wallet Platform. And we process approximately 2.8 billion transactions on a monthly basis, processing over $40 billion uh, in these 2.8 billion transactions, having approximately 100 million active users, which translates to 400 million registered users, and over 300 plus APIs contributing to 500 use cases, okay? So this technology is used at the core of different digital wallet ecosystems by our customers, be it CSPs, be it banks, be it enterprises, and they are enabling the financial services ecosystem for their partners, for their consumers, for their users, be it the agriculturists, be it the governmental agencies, be it the remittance providers, be it the NGOs, be it the donation companies, and really creating an ecosystem with Ericsson being at the heart of it. And I really hope the future also means that we get more known in the financial services space. And like we have done over 100 plus years with telecommunications, we get to do that same in the next decade with financial services and they're on. And that is a very perfect and uh, optimistic way uh, of maybe closing, closing the session uh, for today. Now, dear audience, thank you for listening for the, to this fireside chat where we hopefully were able to connect uh, how does mobile money, financial inclusion and climate change come together uh, in a hopefully a better uh, world uh, in the future. Now, if you would like to get in touch with Ericsson, Pavan or myself, uh, you will find contact details, of course, uh, uh, on the pages of this, of this session. But otherwise, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn, uh, the X platform, the former Twitter, of course, or any of the social media or email directly to us. Now, that being said, thank you very much for listening. And uh, 
looking forward to a greener future. Thank you.